Welcome to a special edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus, and today's show puts one high profile subject in the driver's seat, driverless cars. This means autonomous vehicles, cars that do all of the work of handling themselves without any input from people. Manufacturers worldwide are investing in the technology to make this happen. But right now, full automation doesn't exist on American roads, at least not legally. The car maker Tesla offers both an autopilot and a full self-driving capability package, but it says neither of them actually makes the vehicle fully self-operating. They're intended to be used with a completely attentive driver. The company has investigated a couple incidents in which crashes occurred when the autopilot feature was reportedly enabled. So there are concerns about the safety of this technology. And that includes the fact that it's only possible with computers. What if they lock up or need a reboot like your smartphone? What if they're hacked? Also, privacy advocates have sounded the alarm about your every movement and speed and destination being tracked and logged. Who gets access to that information? For today's show, though, we're giving you a glimpse of a driverless ideal. What could the future look like for a city filled with autonomous vehicles, assuming everything goes as manufacturers and supporters of the technology hope it will? Americans love their cars. Getting my first car was one of the happiest days of my life. And I've loved driving ever since, especially fast cars. Uh, yeah, that's not actually my car, but hey, look, this is my story and I can dream if I want to. But what if I'm part of the last generation to get excited about driving a car? I've spent the past year traveling the country, talking to entrepreneurs, engineers, and test drivers who are building the cars of tomorrow. And when they imagine the future, driving a car isn't part of it. They envision roads full of cars driven by machines, where traffic jams are no more, where the death rate by car accidents drops to zero. The end of car ownership as we know it. Even to the point of human driving one day becoming illegal. I ask them all the same thing. What will the future look like? And what will it take to get there? What I found was really exciting, but also a bit shocking. Okay, so as soon as I turn out of this parking lot, I'm gonna engage in self-driving mode. Right. So technically, we don't need a driver in the car. So you and I are basically, in a way, just yep. passengers now. Yes. We're test driving a car powered by autonomous vehicle startup Drive AI on the streets of Northern California. It's one of several companies working to utterly transform how we live. This test car could be the prototype of an automobile that not only takes you out of the driver's seat, but creates a future where you might not need to own a car at all. At least, that's what the people building him think. Ownership will probably be abandoned. Um, we mostly have uh, cars that we summon on our phone. The car will come empty to us and, and, and pick us up and we get inside in front of our office or our house and it drives us straight to the restaurant and there's no time wasted with parking. In a world of self-driving cars, the utopia of the future, the only vehicles operating in the city are driverless electric emissionless vehicles. They can position themselves in a state where you, know, you or I hailing one from our smartphone has one there within a minute. We will look back and say, wow, people own cars to get from this point to that point. Eliminating car ownership would drastically change the way we shape our cities. The thing I'm most excited about is the ability on the street to reallocate space away from the storage of vehicles. Right now, cars sit idle 94.8% of the time. I mean, that's staggering. And I think we could literally close 30, 40% of our streets to automobiles. You don't need cars on, on neighborhood streets anymore. You just need them on the perimeter of your neighborhood. All of those parking facilities today get turned into um, residential space or parks or offices or restaurants. And we can kind of give back the city uh, to the people that live in it and take it away from the automobiles, right? And I think that they, the quality of life and the opportunity to kind of reuse that space uh, is gonna be pretty magical. Imagine it, 
never driving again. The nation of muscle cars, NASCAR, and open road. You're gonna tell Americans they can't drive? Well, eventually, maybe. There may be a law in place that basically says 50 years from now, humans cannot drive on public roads. And if a human does want to drive, actually go to a private car ranch where he can basically drive to your heart's content. All right, I know what you're thinking. A car ranch? But it's actually not that crazy. Remember, when we transitioned from horses to automobiles, we didn't shoot all the horses. Well, guess what? These car ranches actually already exist. Think of car companies that build high-end sports cars that are meant to be driven by humans, not robots. They're already building driving courses around the country. And yes, they're as fun as they sound. We opened in May 2015. You'll come in, you'll meet your, you'll register and meet your driving coach, and then the driving coach will then take you onto the track. We believe this, this destination that we've created has got a long-term future. Porsche knows that driverless technology is around the corner, but they still want people to love driving, even if they do less of it on public roads. All right, let's get back to the real world. The rise of car sharing services has already made people accustomed to the idea of not owning a car. Today, human drivers pick us up when we use Uber or Lyft, but that's not gonna last. Autonomous ride sharing is absolutely coming. Uh, it is right around the corner and you'll see it in pockets at first and slowly and surely you'll start to see these vehicles all over the place. There is an opportunity on a long enough timeline where we may have a fleet that is fully autonomous. As you start to see people adopt to transportation as a service, uh, the hope here is that cars will, car ownership will slowly decline. The ripple effect of automation on our cities will be felt beyond just cars. Drones will roam the skies making deliveries. And robots, like this one already in Washington, D.C., may bring food orders to your door very soon. In the nation's capital, Starship Technologies delivers food by an automated robot. There it is. Hello, robot. I'd like a sandwich. Man. All right. So I just had a robot deliver me a sandwich on the streets of Washington, D.C. It's just in the trial phase right now, but in the future it could be a lot more common. Robots, drones, deliver your hoagie right to your house. All you gotta do is push a button on an app and you got yourself a sandwich. All of these changes won't come easy. Perhaps the biggest fear? What will happen when all these robots get better at our jobs than we are? Will they replace us? Okay, you heard phrases like eliminating car ownership and right around the corner, but you also heard words like prototype and test car. To be clear, experts say a cityscape with fully self-driving cars is likely to be decades away, and whether this would work in the country is another question entirely. For the present, even with all the technology available to us, drivers are still autonomous, mostly in control. And even if driverless cars seem the technological next step, the intelligence of smart cars is still artificial. So smart design will have to take the driver's seat if people are to take a backseat role on the road ahead. I'm Carl Azuz, and I break for CNN.